Hi, this is Julia Witta with Talk Story Media. Sorry, my I've lost my camera in my travels, so I have no camera today, but I have a mic. And we have with us this morning Marilyn Redmond from Seattle area, right? Right. I live in Edgewood, which is between Seattle and Tacoma in Washington State. And uh, she's been a friend of mine for many years, and I wanted to have her on because she's just written a new book. So tell us about your new book, Marilyn. Well, thank you, Julia. I'm so pleased to be here and so glad to be back on your show again. This is fun. Yeah, well, I'm actually writing a book. It's not quite finished yet, but the book I'm writing is called Divinely Protected. And it's really about, I have been blessed with almost dying 12 times and all the times that the spirit world has come in and saved me so I could get through whatever I needed to get through to find answers spiritually. So I, in several cases, um, just as an example of how spirit has come in and helped me, um, my one of my first obvious ones was uh, going off the cliff at the Grand Canyon. And that Whoa. was that was published in uh, it was like the Enquirer that there was another tabloid years back and published that story in their newspaper one year, and it's um, when we were sliding we were it was after Christmas and we'd gone taken our children to Disneyland and decided to go into Mexico uh, while we were down in that area and visiting on our big Christmas vacation. And coming back, we were to go to the Grand Canyon so I could pick up some artifacts because I was teaching Indians in the school I taught. And my friend at the school had loaned me some wonderful little artifacts. And I thought, I want my own. So let's stop at the gift store at the Grand Canyon and I'll pick up my own. So on the way to the gift store, uh, we were coming into the Grand Canyon um, area and we were keeping track of the weather because uh, it was winter. And the snow was forecasted for two days later. So we thought, oh, we'll make it up to the park and head on home. <clears throat> so <clears throat> guess what? The next morning we were heading up for the park, but it snowed that morning. The snow showed up a day early. And we were debating if to go up or not because the, the roads would be of course, snowy. It's 8,000 feet up at the Grand Canyon. And uh, I thought, well, gee, it's a national park. They'll have the roads cleared. Ha ha. So we <laughs> headed up. We headed up for the park and we were going towards the, we were heading north from the south entrance. And um, the road was very close to the edge of the canyon. And there was a car coming at us in the middle of the road, but the snow was covering it. So you couldn't see where the middle line was. And we didn't know if to go around the right side to miss his coming at us or go around the left side of who was coming at us. So just to be on the safe side, uh, I thought it would be smarter to, there usually is a shoulder, right? Right. <laughs> uh -oh. no, no shoulder. So I said to my husband, I says, well, let's stay on this side of the road. That, I thought that was smarter. So we did, well, guess what? There was icy, cold morning. And as he put the brakes down to slow down so that we hopefully wouldn't be hit by this guy and could go around him, we started sliding and we slid right off the cliff. Oh. Up the car, all of a sudden, the car started to turn upside down and I felt six pairs of hands hold the car. And very slowly, we went upside down like slow motion on a camera and landed about 40 feet down upside down. There would happen to be a piece of land jutting out from the cliff. Oh and my we, God. We landed upside down. My child, this was before seatbelt laws. Uh, my daughter and son were in the back of the station wagon with blankets and pillows around them, thank goodness. They were cushioned. And I was in the seatbelt. My husband was in a seatbelt. We were hanging from the upside down part of the car. He's trying to release me from my seatbelt and I'm trying to release him so we can get the heck out of there. Because in the movies, you see the car explode when it goes off a cliff, right? <laughs> so we're trying to get out of this car. And the worst thing I could think of was my daughter's brand new glasses I had just paid for were going to get broken. <laughs> That's where my <laughs> mind was. 
and and we got out of the car and we of course needed help so he sent me to the gift store he says something i've never hitchhiked in my life and i'm scared to death to do this he said hitchhike down to the gift store and get us help so as i was going down uh, an rv picked me up and was taking me to the gift store for the arranger and coming behind us was the car uh the the car that, that cleans the roads and they worked for the park state uh, park uh, department and they were the road cleaners and so they saw us go off the road and signaled the ranger for help so as i'm heading towards for help the rangers uh, sirens were sounding towards our accident and so when i got to the gift store i had to thumb my way back to the accident <laughs> And, and uh, the help would come because they had seen the whole thing, uh, the people that were clearing the road. And so the ranger standing there touching and scratching his head and it said, we've never had anybody have this kind of an accident and walk out without a scratch. Wow. I imagine because if you hadn't landed on that, you would have went all the way to the bottom. Exactly. Oh, my God. So that was one of the times, that was the first time I had a more than a, just an imagination. I had angels in my life to keep me alive. And that's happened so many times at this point, I'm putting it in a book. We, I've also been off the cliff at the, at the, between Banff and Jasper in Canada. My husband passed out at the wheel and um, it was a daytime and he hadn't been drinking, but for whatever reason he passed out. <clears throat> and the car was close enough to the cliff that we were headed and the wheels were turned that way because it was Kirby Road and the wheels were headed off the cliff and off the front of the car was off over the cliff and the back end of the car was still on the road. <laughs> oh my God. And he's passed out at the wheel. And so I had tried when he would get irrational and drive crazy, which he as the drinking alcoholic did. And he was a rageaholic. So at one point I tried to put my hand on the wheel and move the, the wheel back where it needed to be. And he gave me a, a lecture I never will forget. And I was never going to touch the wheel again. And so the angels literally took my hand and put my hand on the wheel and said, turn the wheel towards the road. So your wheels are going the right direction. So I, while I was doing that, I saw an, I literally saw an angel pick up the front end of the car and put the front end of the car back on the road so that we would be okay. So I've had a lot of, and they stopped me, him from killing me one day. So I've had a lot of, or several days actually, several times, a lot of angel experiences. What I'm finding out is that we have all kinds of spiritual help around us all the time. We do not come to this planet individually without any support. We are filled with all kinds of angelic and higher spiritual energies around us so we can get through the life experiences we need. And, and so, you know, I had a fire in my house one night. I was teaching classes and uh, spiritual classes. And I let the candle continue burning. I don't usually use candles. And I thought, well, it's sitting there. I might as well light it and enjoy it. And after the class, I just let it continue to burn until I was ready to go to bed. And all of a sudden, the alarm in the house went off because it was the fire alarm. And behind the candle had been some portraits I was painting. And, and the back of the candle, it turned out, was uh, the wick of the candle when it wasn't going through the center of the candle it was going down the back of the candle and lit these pictures and it started oh. a fire oh my goodness so i um immediately was trying to put the, the fire out and um scared to death obviously it was in my art room and this the room's big enough to hold classes and um i i knew i was it was so big, I knew I, I couldn't do it alone. So I picked up the phone to call the fire department. And the fire department, I never got them dialed because the angels put the phone back down and said, we will put it out for you. What? 
and I watched them put the fire out. I still have a burn in the rug and a piece of furniture that was still burned from the um, fire and had to have the room repainted because it was so smoked. Um, and so in meditating the next day, I said to my angels, what was that all about? And they said, we looked all over your house for this fire to happen because you were so angry about your mother not allowing you to do artwork because she gave me an easel when I was five. And when I ran out of paper, she says, we can't afford paper. And that ended my art career at the time. <laughs> and so they said, you were so angry. And now that she's passed away, you're free to be able to do your artwork. And you needed to express the anger. And they referred me to a, a show I'd watched on television years ago called Unsolved Mysteries, where the boy in jail was having his grandfather had died and had molested him as a child. And he was so angry that when the grandfather died, his feelings were so intense that the rain and snow of his anger was coming down around him, not around anybody else. And this was inside. They let him go to the funeral. And at this, after the funeral was the coffee get together and he was having rain and snow coming down around him. And he was escorted from the uh, jail by a guard and they put him back in prison. And, and they said that was his energy of his anger manifesting in physical form your anger manifested as a fire because of the abuse you went through by not being able to have your creativity actually acknowledged and manifest. Wow. So, so what I know is that in so many places, and those are just a couple examples of, of how spiritually we are protected and guided. And these experiences are to teach us that the things, you know, in my anger with my mother in this case, I had to learn forgiveness, gratitude, um, compassion, and unconditional love for her. And she was my teacher to learn that I had to change the energies of where I was coming from as a child and didn't know better because of where I, how I was raised in a dysfunctional family and how I needed to change that energy into being a love for her. And it's taken years <clears throat> to change that energy into accepting that even though she couldn't love me because she was mentally ill, paranoid schizophrenic, she meant love. She just couldn't manifest it because she was so abused herself. She was locked up in her heart and could never let the walls of her heart down because it would be too painful. So I never felt loved. And then when she of course, stopped my artwork, that was a huge thing because that was something that was creative and would have been good for me. And so that was blocked. And so I've had to learn that when she sewed for me, sewed clothes, <clears throat> she was a beautiful seamstress. And my spiritual teacher said every stitch in those clothes was a stitch of love. That was the only way she could provide love for you. So gradually I learned to appreciate what she could do for me. She put me in dance lessons and music lessons and made sure I got to college so I could be a teacher. And she did all these things when she was married in domestic violence herself and the, my stepdad was sabotaging everything for me too because I was excess baggage in the marriage. And, and so I, everything was being blocked but she did do what she could do and today I know as a mentally ill person, the things that she accomplished so I can be who I am today um, were, was amazing because most people in mental illness wouldn't have been able to do some of the things she did for me. So I can see that today through different eyes. I have moved out of my fear, guilt, and shame into a higher consciousness and perception so that I could see clear that she was teaching me what I needed to, to change my energies from where I was coming from, the energies I came into this life with, I needed to change from my history so that I could move into being a loved-based person rather than a fear-based person. And that's what so all that's, these- That's what your book is about then? Well, it's about learning to change our energies. And these people are just our teachers. 
And, and so what I know is my history is in the past and I have the ability to not keep reliving the past and I can forgive. I can give up the past for a new day and live right now is reality. Right now in the moment, I have the presence of love, the presence of God. Right now I have a roof over my head. Well, I, I grew up as an emotional three-year-old. So, I mean, having a roof over my head today is, is security. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so these things that were plaguing me, because I saw my stepdad beat up my mom when I was three, well, my real dad beat up my mom when I was three years old. And I went into this turtle shell of protection and as a three-year-old, I always thought, where am I going to get food? And where am I going to get the money for food? You know, and I was afraid of physical harm. So today, through the many changes of changing my understanding that life is about energy and changing that energy, I can grow up and become a mature person. And I don't have to worry about where the food's coming from today. And I have financial security. in mentally i am not afraid of being broke that i can't eat today because god supplies everything i need and i do have what i need today and i don't have to worry from the past and i don't have to make it a future problem because it's, the future isn't even here yet so as i live in the presence that's the presence of god and it's a gift the present is a gift today and i can release the past issues and I, I won't go into all of them on this program, but I can release my past issues of the abuse I went through and the difficulties I've had to learn to overcome. I, I've changed all that through forgiveness and realizing they played their part so very well. I can applaud them today. I mean, it was more than I wanted, but it's like a Shakespeare said, we're living a play. And so I could see they played their parts and I have today thank them for playing that part and take responsibility for my life instead of being the victim of, as the little child. So today I can say, I'm sorry that you played that part for me, that it was, but it was necessary. I love you and thank you for playing that part so that I could learn to grow up and become an adult and not stay as that little scared little child who was afraid I'm gonna be hurt and that's how I ended up in domestic violent marriage because like attracts like, and I attracted exactly what I grew up with and what I knew. And today I'm in a relationship of unconditional love. And as I've changed the energies in me from fear, guilt, shame, and more, all, all the other negative feelings and behaviors, I changed me and I became the magnet to attract a fellow who has treated me with unconditional love for 20 years at this point. So we you have, have learned techniques for changing the energy or is it all, is it all in your head? That's, I have trouble with things that are, I just have to think differently because that's hard. What I understand today, it's, it's your feelings. I grew up in a home where you were, had no talk, no trust and no feelings. And I've had to thaw out my feelings. I've had to learn to communicate and express myself. And that's another long story. I've had to learn to trust not my, my parents because they weren't trustworthy. They fought every night. I've had to learn to trust a higher power of love that is truly my heavenly father. And the father, people is just how I got here. God is my creator and my source. And I've learned to have be open to it's okay to feel I have healed nine addictions and it's all about covering your feelings. So as you become vulnerable and you open up your expression, you can that's when the feelings can change from the negative to the positive you you uh, substitute the positive for the negative and live in today, which is all there is, is all there is, is today. And it's all good. It's because God created it and said, it is all good. I had all those old negative feelings just covered up the goodness. And as I peeled the onion, I've discovered what Tesla says is true. Tesla says, if you want to understand the universe, it's about energy, vibration, and frequency. So I wrote also the book Paradigm Busters Reveal the Real You to show how you can change your energy from the lower energies of fear 
fear-based energies into a higher consciousness. And today I feel like I'm living in grace. I have moved into a higher consciousness where I see through the eyes of love. I see through the eyes of God today. And I shared in a sharing earlier how I walked away from a dysfunctional dinner the other night feeling adult and not the little scared little girl anymore. I didn't have to participate like the scared little child. And I could walk away in my adult uh, emotions and uh -huh. see how wounded those people are. And, and so they were, again, they were my teachers of, I've grown out of my old situation into a place that I never thought possible. And so the book is explaining how, when we take on and, and accept the perfect love of God and know we're dearly loved, it wasn't that my mother didn't love me. She was playing a part that I needed to find the love within my heart. And the love has always been there but when you're afraid to open your heart like she was, and that's what they call paranoid schizophrenic. Um, I was in meditation asked at one point, do you want to leave your mental illness and walk out of that prison like your mother could not walk out of her mental illness prison? And I said, yeah, I do. And what I, I've gotten answers of how life changes when I change and how that energy can be changed and how the the energies of, of the universe support us in that change. And we're here to do that so we can move in and return. I believe we're all prodigal sons of God returning home and that our inheritance is that abundance and prosperity. I just have to be open enough to receive it and let it manifest and anything negative stops it. So I okay. have become, I become fearless. We're, so, we're almost out of time, so could you tell us where we can get that book? Oh, okay. My, all my books are at Amazon.com. Okay. And I have a website. You can get them off my website, Marilyn. I, well, my blog is Marilyn Redmond's books.blogs.com, uh, Marilyn Redmond's books. And I also have a lot of YouTubes. Uh, they can reach me through that. And uh, so it's, it's a matter of, you can even Google and my name will come up and you can reach me through just Googling. Okay. So my, my books are at amazon.com and they're all about moving our energies into the reality and out of the fear, which is not real. It's just an illusion. And I can leave the illusion behind. I can leave the nightmare behind and walk into the sunlight of God. And nothing grows in the dark. I'm out of the darkness and I just keep growing as time progresses. I'm just so glad that people can learn that we can change our lives into a better place. And that's what I'm about is to carry the message of love. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. I appreciate having you on. And as always, it's been a wonderful interview. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. And any time that we can do it again, it would be wonderful. Great.